Good evening, everyone, and a warm welcome to you all on Suen Pharma Quarter 3 FY24 earnings call. Let me introduce you to our management team present here with us today. We have our executive chairman, Mr. Anaswami Rajesh, our managing director, Dr. Prasada Raju, our CEO, Dr. Sudhir Singh, our new CFO, Himanshu Agarwal. Our management team will dwell into industry dynamic strategy and operational highlights for nine months and quarter. Following that, CFO Himanshu will provide in-depth insights into our financial performance. Later, we'll open the call for Q&A. Let us proceed with the opening remarks from our executive chairman, Mr. Venkish. Thank you, Sindhula. Good evening, everyone. We extend a warm welcome to all of you on our Q3 FY24 earnings conference call. To start with, at a macro level, our third quarter results were in line as expected, as indicated in the previous quarter. Near-term macro challenges persist due to industry-wide inventory destocking in specialty chemicals, an impact on growth due to COVID supplies in the base of pharma CDMO. This is likely to keep our next few quarters performance soft. However, we remain very confident about mid-term. We have focused on fostering customer relationships, optimizing operations, and strategically positioning ourselves for long-term growth. We continue to have engaging conversation with our existing and potential customers on the early and late commercial projects. The current RFQs pipeline sustains a higher pace, and we are witnessing traction in the RFQs conversions. We are striving toward business opportunities in the medium term. As you are, as you are aware that uh, we have also announced our ESOP scheme, reinforcing our commitment to employee benefits and talent retention. The resolution is ongoing. ESOPs are intended to not only foster the sense of ownership and motivation, but also aligns directly with our growth objectives creating dynamic environment. By linking employee interest with Swain's pharma growth, we aim to deliver value to both our employees and shareholders. On a midterm, we continue to be optimistic and uh, all, our, all our energies are uh, driven behind what we think is a good growth opportunity in the midterm and lockdown. So with that, um, I'll hand it over to Dr. Sudhir Singh. Thank you, Vadis. Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, on this annual call. As uh, Vadis mentioned uh, in his uh, speech, the RFQ pipeline and convergence are uh, progressing well as we strive towards medium term business opportunities. Our focus lies on prioritizing strategic customer relationship, accuracy optimization, and fostering long term growth. The ongoing progress of our R&D lab and pseudo-update expansion, operational capacity expansion, is consistent with our effort towards seven plus growth trajectory. Our business development team positions us for continued success in a strategic growth opportunity. As several discussions on early and late stage project management, project engagements are ongoing. Despite near-term softness, our confidence remains strong in achieving medium-term growth. Um, now, I would request uh, our managing director, Dr. Prasad Raju, to open his remarks. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sudhir and uh, our chairman, Anaswami Vaidish. Very good evening to all of you. A warm welcome to your company's uh, earnings call. Our priorities for the coming year include the persistent engagement with customers, building out respective teams, ongoing investment in infrastructure for EHS and ESG as a part of our strengthening our business fundamentals, consistent cost improvement and strategic investments in technology and capability building is an important priority. Apart from this, we are also focusing on extensive m and pipeline. Near-term macro challenges persist due to industry-wide inventory destocking in specialty chemicals and impact of COVID supplies in the base. This is likely to keep our next few quarter performance soft. However, we remain confident about our medium term. 
we are pleased to welcome mr himanshu agarwal as our new cfo bringing with him an impressive career spanning over 28 years he has previously held key roles at bennett and colman automaki ajo nobel india astrazeneca and ica india i will now invite our cfo himanshu to share the financial insights thank you thank you dr prasad and thank you to management team for welcoming us to the assembly at the outset i would like to express my gratitude to mr sundar and mr subarao for their significant contributions to sudan's success moving to the results i think as expected and as informed earlier we are adjusting to a global in the second business as well as to the covid molecule based effect i think as has been communicated earlier our nature of the business is such that a quarter to quarter reflected of the reflected through the yte numbers there will therefore i will first cover i24 in the nine months of fy24 our revenue from operation was at 798 crores reflecting a decline of 18% however as mentioned by dr sudhir the second business is down due to global restocking and we still have covid molecules last year based effect if we were to exclude these two elements from our base then the underlying business revenue is at a growth of 35% and the pharma cdmo business excluding the covid molecule has grown at around 2% despite the softness in the revenue due to macro headwinds our adjusted abitda is at 348 crores which is at a very healthy abitda margin of 44% last year adjusted abitda margins of 41% similarly the business adjusted back at rupees 257 crores is at a margin of 32% which is well ahead of last year's adjusted fat margin of 29% as dr sudhir said our capacity expansion at surefit is going well we had committed 200 crores on surefit and we progressed in the right direction on that and similarly we have as mentioned earlier allotted a capex of around 30 to 40 crores in a new r&d facility which continues in progress in line with our plans as mentioned earlier the quarter to quarter do not reflect the true nature of our business nevertheless i will still cover the quarter three financials as reported as you would notice in the press release our quarter three reflects the cost associated with the new hires and the ongoing implementation of new systems and processes in the results our revenue from operations is 220 crores which is declined 38% while overall growth has been impacted by second be stocking and base effect of covid molecule excluding these two elements the revenue grows at around 2% the adjusted abitda is in line with previous year abitda so abitda margin is around 36% versus the last year abitda margin at 38% similarly the pat at 57 crores comes with a margin at 26% in line with the last year margin of 28% now i would request uh, dr rajesh if he could give us a summary thank you uh in one uh so we anticipate that the near term macro challenges will persist due to industry wide uh, restocking which i mentioned at the beginning itself and uh, we are likely to keep our next few quarter performance up but as i mentioned we remain confident about our mid term in summary our transition to new management is complete and we have strengthened our senior leadership and despite short term challenges uh, our focus on customer engagement
strategic initiatives and medium to long term macro tailwinds remains unwaveringly strong and with this uh, we thank you for your time and uh, open the floor for q and a thank you thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on the touchstone telephone if you wish to withdraw yourself from the question you may press star and 2 ladies and gentlemen we request that you please restrict yourselves to two questions per person you may rejoin the queue for follow up questions and please use headsets while asking a question we will now wait for a moment while the question queue assembles The first question is from the line of Gokul Maheshwari from Aurora Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, I uh, just wanted to check what was the revenues from the COVID molecule in the same quarter last year, which you are referring to as a high base. So, Gokul, I mean, uh, what's important is that uh, what you highlighted. that our business excluding the covid molecule in 9 months is at positive 2% okay i mean unfortunately we would not be in a position to give an individual molecule by molecule level uh, information okay so the previous management had indicated that the covid revenues in your fy22 was uh, 120 crores so um this was a bit of a surprise that in fy23 there was no covid revenues as such so um uh, are you saying that there is no revenues in the q3 fy23 quarter for covid because you are referring to the f- nine month number as a uh, uh, year to date uh, figure which is correct q3 fy23 did not have a covid uh, revenue number So in in that case, the CDMO business for the pharma CDMO business has seen a 33 percent drop uh, in this particular quarter. Is there any particular reason why there is such a sharp drop in the uh, business in this particular quarter and this business? No, no, I don't think so. I have given you any number in terms of a pharma CDMO drop. I think what's relevant, as I said, that I we have. Very categorically said that this business is not representative from a quarter to quarter perspective. We will have to look at this business from a YTD perspective because otherwise uh, the business will not give us sense. And see, uh, that's very important for us to understand that we have to look at this business from a YTD perspective rather than quarter on quarter perspective. Okay. Uh, this is the second question is on the uh, Cohan's uh, merger. You mentioned in your annual report that there is a plan to merge this company. Could you give an update on what is the uh, strategy on that front and what's the progress? So, uh, see, from a board perspective, we have passed a resolution for evaluation, and we are in the process of evaluating that merger. We will update you once. we have more understanding okay great thank you thank you the next question is from the line of darshit shah from nirvana capital please go ahead yeah the thanks for the opportunity uh, so just want to know uh, So, you know, if you got us back, uh, you know, we that there were around five molecules in phase three uh, trials. Uh, so, would the new management be able to uh, tell us what this, uh, you know, how many molecules are currently in phase three and uh, ongoing? Thank you, uh, Darshan. Uh, as of now, uh, we don't uh, get any new update of uh, the moment, as you understand. is a long term uh, in nature and quarter on quarter significant uh, movement uh, cannot happen and still they are at the same stage 
and so earlier you know we used to get details on uh, the number of projects uh, we are currently ongoing and the phase wise details so would the new management uh, uh, be kind of able to provide those in the presentation and you know, so that we get an idea of how many projects we have added and you know which are in which phases your thoughts on that question uh, just to let you know as you understand the kind of innovative customer that we deal with we are abide by a certain ndas and we prefer not to dwell on to their pipeline status and uh, if you have to kindly bear with us we would not be able to dwell with that to it right i'm so we are seeing that now uh, given the global situation we are talking right now we expect next few quarters to be soft so in uh, in our um uh, when we expect normal growth kind of to return to the business uh, uh, providing that none of the phase 3 molecules kind of go into commercial in next few quarters darshan as you understand um, currently we still are watching to understand how the bottom up bottom out of entire decline happens we feel we might be at the middle of this cycle unless we clearly get a sense of whether it is completely bottomed out or not we will not be able to really tell you how much time it will take for recovery got it and then lastly uh, can you help us understand what is this adjusted ebitda i mean the old inventory provision that you have kind of uh, provided in uh, the recent uh, presentation yeah i am requesting the uh, cfo iman chu to take us iman chu so uh version as you would notice uh, i think we have in the press release mentioned that the old inventory provision has been adjusted uh, for around 134 million so which is 13.4 crores so that's the number that has been uh, provided for as a one time provision so this is just for this one time uh, for this quarter itself or it will be a recurring thing now hence for in a kind of presentation and presentations no so this is as i said this is one time provision for the old inventory that we have assessed at this stage okay got it got it okay sir thank you so much thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen to ask a question you may please press star and 1 participants if you wish to ask questions you may please press star and 1 Ladies and gentlemen if you wish to ask questions you may please press star and 1 at this time We have the next question from the line of Mayur Parkeria from Wealth Managers India Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir, and thank you for taking my question. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Thank you. So, sir, I just had one uh, question, and I understand that this is a qualitative remark, and you may not, but just to understand. there has been a reasonably long period of uh, you know consolidation and uh, uh, you know which we have been uh, looking for in the, as a as a company also uh, so if you can give some perspective about uh, what do you mean uh, when you say that uh, the near term is challenging but in the medium long term you are there so does the medium term mean one year plus or is it a longish period than the medium term or less so my uh, just to give you a perspective uh, there are two important challenges uh, are happening uh, one is on the specialty chemical side which is definitely uh, cyclical phenomenon is happening on the deep stocking sir x of x of agrochem if you can say sir i understand sorry just i i i understand i should have clarified in the question i mean x of uh, agrochem how do you see that sir 
on the so even cbm of pharma is also only 2% kind of growth so you know uh, x of that how do you see pharma cbm board has uh, multiple uh, challenges to address one is definitely as you understand we have to depend on the customers growth and customers will eventually depend on the clinical success of the molecule number 2 we also look at some of the stock and inventory optimization levels so these are of the two important phenomenons it's very hard for us to really predict when a phase 3 molecule can be ready for a read out and followed by the nda filing and approval hence we stay relevant to our customers and wait for them to have a successful clinical closure uh, which normally takes anywhere between 1 and 1/2 to 2 years time that's how we are not able to exactly define what would be the terrain at which the success comes so, so at the broad level you are still not in a position to give us any indication about what does that medium term mean and how many quarters we still uh, you know go through these challenges right is that right yeah, the, yeah. Okay. Sir, uh, just from a from a normal TMO on a YTD basis, it said 24% is the number. I think it's not 2%. Just wanted to clarify. YTD is, uh, sir. Uh, just one clarification. Sorry, I misunderstood. Uh, there was a question that Q3 of FY23, uh, there was no COVID molecule, right? No, no. I think uh, there is a clarification. Quarter three of previous year has a COVID right. molecule. It is there in the base of the COVID molecule. Right. So I that is what I was to also come because the your reference just went a little. I that is why I got confused. So correct. So Q3 FI 23 had. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. So last question from my side. uh you know we have been trying to move uh, the business uh, means apart from the uh, cbmo and agrochem we have been trying to enter into intermediates and uh, sorry the api chain also uh, and there was an, a more integrated kind of play for us uh, where are we in the discussion stage with uh, the client or is that still uh, there or is it only going to be mainly after uh, the merger happens or is it uh, somewhere which you know how do we see that uh, angle aspect of business playing out over the next one year currently mayur there is one active project for graduation from a registered starting material to api by one of the innovative company project is still active but as you understand it has to follow through certain procedures including quality checks and also a customer visit to the facilities it is active but we cannot exactly decide by when it will be over and it will be converted into commercial second part of your question you are also referring to can we convert that into formulation and uh, be a forward integration we don't expect even the mid term also that is going to happen because we as a country don't have a precedence of uh, providing formulated product to innovative companies i hope it clarifies your question Right, right. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Mayo. Thank you. Participants, you are requested to please press star and one if you wish to ask a question. Next question is from the line of Ashish Soni from Family Office. Please go ahead. Sir, in the opening remarks, you spoke about uh, some M&A activity and uh, some RFU discussions. Can you throw some uh, better light on it? Uh, just want to understand in detail what are we, our thoughts there. So, there are two parts you mentioned. Uh, one is on the M&A side. As you understand, uh, we have surplus cash in the balance sheet. As a part of our overall growth strategy, we are also evaluating potential possibilities of inorganic ways to. expand and accelerate our growth aspirations uh, currently we are actively pursuing and looking for uh, few technology platforms which can differentiate ourselves from the existing crowd and also stay very relevant to our existing customers that activity is happening right now 
and what about this rfq like you said that uh, rfq pipeline is increasing so when do you see some uh, impact over revenues maybe 6 months 12 months can you throw some light on that as well as you understand rfq is definitely uh, we have seen improved in flow but as you understand it takes time for rfq conversion by the customers also we expect in the next one two quarters some of the results should come in it will not take more long either way whether we win or we lose we will get to know in next one two quarters time that's a common cycle that we follow and mna when you said you are uh, exploring for inorganic opportunities so do you see something closing in next one year <laughs> Uh, that is the aspiration that we have, but uh, we would not be able to create any speculation at this stage unless we are clear. But definitely, there is a healthy pipeline of M and A opportunities that we are pursuing right now. Appropriately, we come back to all of you. And a uh, uh, last question: uh, We have built a lot of capabilities and capacity upgradation. We have done in last few years. So, when do you think we can optimally utilize it to our strategic perspective in next two three years? This capacity is what we have built or upgraded. so again uh, this is an ongoing exercise of uh, current uh, capacity utilization uh, in the case of uh, various units of sugen uh, that we have more importantly surya pet uh, new capacity expansion has been one more addition to us currently we are planning for in the next two years time we should be able to really bring this capacity to an optimal level that's our internal endeavor today we have enough capacity available to us Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Darshit Shah from Nirvana Capital. Please go ahead. So thank for the follow up, sir. Uh, just on the M&A side, so uh, we understand we have thousand crores, so roughly around that uh, amount uh, with us. So when we are talking about new technologies and platforms that we are looking at, so this is over and above uh, the board uh, concern that you probably got to kind of merge co hands uh, uh, also. So this is uh, over and above what we are planning to probably looking at co hands and other relevant technology and platforms also. Is that understanding correct? Uh, that's it. Uh, currently, we are looking for what is the M&A opportunity which can be more meaningful. And a strategic for driving the student growth is our top priority right now. Hence, your understanding is correct. And uh, lastly, you know, uh, you you've been talking about a five-year vision for the company. So, when can we expect something uh, to be out in the presentation uh, for the investors? Uh, that's it. Uh, currently, it is at a draft stage. As you understand, uh, last quarter call we were mentioning it is work in progress, but definitely our teams have kept a lot of effort and we have reached to a draft stage. We are contemplating how can we really convert that into a final blueprint. Uh, sometime towards the closure of the year, probably we can come back with some specific outcomes of the overall blueprint. Otherwise, we are at an advanced stage of closing it. Sure, listen. Looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Participants, to ask questions, you may press star and one. The next question is from the line of Ashish Soni from Family Office. Please go ahead. Yes, this regarding, I think you are uh, talking about a uh, near-term weakness. So, what's your capex plan? Are we putting that on hold, or we want to still continue with that? If you can some throw light uh, on that for next one or two years. Ashish, uh, as you heard us consistently today, our endeavour is to deepen our existing relationship with customers and fill up the current capacity, which is relatively suboptimally used right now. Then appropriately plan for the capex. That's how we are looking for right now. Which means your understanding is very correct. Midterm, we try to decide based on our overall strategic options in which assets that we have to have a capex allocation. But any guideline on maintenance capex, which which will definitely be required in like next one year or two years. So normally, to maintain our facilities, we continue to have the capex, which we will historically we have been spending the same amount will go. I'm talking about more of a growth capex. We will wait till we reach to a certain stage of optimal usage of capacities. 
So when you say optimal is like 50% for the thing or uh, lower than so that? Normally, whichever 50% is the right trigger point. As you understand, uh, Ashish, uh, the capex has two components. One is building a civil structure. Second one is equipment installation and qualification. Infrastructure of civil takes long time. Hence, our trigger point is to keep the infrastructure of civil first. And wait for the product level mapping and the customer level mapping comes into its play. So we decide after one and a half to two years, once we reach to 50% of the capacity, we start building a civil structure. Again, in our business, our 80% is 100% of utilization because we do not want to run with more than 80% of the capacity occupancy because we will lose the flexibility to the customers. That's how we look at the CapEx decisions. And one last question. Uh, this MLA, are you planning in India or outside of India? Currently, at least first few assets, we are hoping to have it in India right now. But okay. again, we'll come back with specific uh, answers as uh, that ship was also asking, uh, you should allow us for some time. There is a healthy pipeline, we'll get back with specific answers soon. Okay, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gokul Maheshwari from Auriga Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the follow-up opportunity. Uh, I'm just trying to just, uh, sorry to harp on this on the COVID thing. I'm just referring to your page 24 of the annual report where uh, you have mentioned that, uh, and I quote, uh, the growth seems to be subdued owing to the one-off revenue from the COVID-related projects in FY22, which was absent in FY23. If we take these numbers out, the growth of the numbers aligned with their growth of business estimates. So I'm just a bit curious and confused in terms of what base are you referring in terms of COVID molecule revenues for FY23? So, Gokul, uh, let's take this offline because I have not had the opportunity to look at what you are looking at. Okay, this is the page 24 of the end report, uh, which you may, I'm, I'm happy to take this offline, but I'm just quoting it, uh, let it in your end report, which is mentioned. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mayur Parkeria from Wealth Managers India Private Limited. Please go ahead. So, so thank you again for uh, taking my question. Uh, sir, just uh, follow up on the last one because again it has cropped up. We would request you to kindly issue a press release if there is any change in the understanding we have. It will help us all of us because, uh, uh, you know, uh, it will in terms of uh, overall disclosure also. So if there is any change in uh, the uh, requirement, request you to kindly release a press release, which will help us. Uh, secondly, uh, sir, on the generic side... My own yes. can just put for a moment. Can you just elaborate? We could not follow your request, please. No, sir, I was saying, referring to the last question, uh, because uh, if, whether as far, with respect to the COVID base, COVID drug base, there is some confusion. So instead of having uh, you know, only one uh, analyst as offline, request you to if you can issue a press release if there is any change uh, in your current uh, discussion requirements, if any. Sir. It's a more of a clarification. It doesn't have any materiality. However, we take your point. We will ensure that there is no information as a mention. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, so the question actually I had on the uh, generic and the formulation side, uh, there has been some uptick uh, which was seen uh, after uh, again uh, quite a, a long period of you know uh, that opportunity not being and, and our uh, tie up with or our understanding with rising pharma which was there. Uh, so uh, how should we look at that uh, segment from two perspectives? One is uh, are we going to now see a sustained uh, growth uh, uh, coming up? And secondly, uh, in the initial phase, it's, uh, are the margins on that a little back-ended as we, uh, you know, the minimum sale and then it uh, uh, percolates down to the bottom line later phase or does it actually more evenly spread as we go ahead overall in terms of segment? If you can just give us some understanding of how we see that in the next uh, one year or so as far as this formulation in the uh, concerns. Thank you. So I'll try to divide this question into multiple places. One is definitely uh, the extent of uh, commercialization of some of the filings which have happened in the past. Uh, 
uh, we see uh, progress happening right now and uh, as we speak even last quarter which is q3 ending december of 23 we had uh, three andas approved related to two products and uh, we also seem to have the commercialization also of the molecules happening and the way we look at here last year it was uh, casper asset is actually uh, making a, a loss and the this year we expect loss can be minimized and next year definitely based on the extent of commercialization of this approved ands definitely uh, loss making to a profit making will always happen number two in terms of uh, the margin it always follow the revenue and uh, in some cases there is an extent of composition of profit share happens in the business on a approval basis it also uh, gets recognized however this is this is a continuous ongoing activity obviously it will recur going forward these are all the two points i hope it answers your question so sir current set of molecules which have gone into commercialization are more evenly spread on margins or they will as on our profit share current set which is we are seeing the uptick for difficult to share that uh, right now but definitely the composition has both composition of molecule comes with both hence margin also will be evenly spread that's what i'm trying to say okay thank you sir thank you thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and 1 to ask a question ladies and gentlemen i would now like to hand the conference over to ms cinderella carvalho for closing comments over to you ma'am thank you participant for your time any questions and answers please please reach out to the investigations or cdr at your convenience thank you so much thank you on behalf of suven pharmaceuticals limited that concludes this conference thank you all for joining us you may now disconnect your lines